Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. There are thousands of lenses from the film days that make stunning images on digital mirrorless cameras. Some of them are very expensive and they make fantastic and stunning images. Some of them are very cheap and they too, some of them at least, also make fantastic stunning images and it's those kind we're going to look at today. These lenses were designed without the aid of computers, they were designed by hand as it were with people doing actual calculations on paper and with slide rules and so on. So they do contain a number of optical compromises and it's those compromises, those flaws and imperfections that gives these lenses and their images character of a kind that modern lenses just can't do. Today we're going to look at five very affordable lenses, each with a very distinctive character. Perhaps you're taking your first steps in vintage lenses or maybe you want to expand your collection and try something new. Any of these lenses will give you some very nice images indeed. So the first lens we're going to look at today is a very unassuming, simple sort of thing. It doesn't look like anything much and to be honest it doesn't really feel like anything very much either. It's rather light. The specs are nothing to write home about. It's a 50mm f2.8 maximum aperture and its minimum focus distance is 0.75 centimetres, so quite a long minimum focus distance. It's the Domi Plan lens, which I believe is made by Maya Optic. So let's have a closer look at this interesting little lens, because it really is an interesting little thing. And there is our little Maya Optic Domi Plan lens. And you can see that the markings, well, they're very clear. They're not engraved. They're all printed or painted on in some sort of uh, way. It's a slightly odd shape. It sort of tapers towards the front and it honestly it can be a bit fiddly to use because these control rings are they're, they're fairly close together the aperture rings at the front and the focus ring is just behind it so when you've got your eye to the viewfinder this is not a particularly easy lens to use and I did have one or two moments of difficulty when I was trying to focus uh, quickly. Is it a Tessar? I don't know. It's a small lens. Uh, it doesn't go very close. It's an f2.8 aperture. It sounds to me like it might well be a Tessar, but I'm really not sure that it is because Tessars are usually very sharp lens and sharpness as we'll see, although it has many other quite amazing qualities, Sharpness, well, this is not the sharpest lens in the pack, so I'm really not sure whether it's a Tessar or not. It's an M42 mount, and there's the venerable old M42 screw mount on the back there. So, as I say, I'm not entirely sure whether this lens is a Tessar design or not. Tessars are usually a little bit sharper than this one. It's not soft, but it's not as sharp as, say, uh, I don't know, the Indostar 61, which I, I know for definite is a Tessar, or indeed the Carl Zeiss Jena Tessar. The other thing that makes me suspect it might not be a Tessar is the kind of blur it makes. Background blur from this lens is unexpectedly wild and wonderful. Now I really hadn't expected that at all and it makes this lens very interesting indeed. Bubbles from point light sources are something to behold. It makes images that are energetic and alive and where it doesn't bubble it stays pretty wild but it never becomes rough. It's always 
pleasant. It stays smooth, soft and beautiful. And th that background blur performance is incredible from such a humble little lens. If you want a lens that will make you some unique and really nice blur, this one is certainly worth a look. It gives fantastic colour as well. Rarely have I seen colours this nice. They're saturated and resonant. They've got loads of contrast and they're really sort of deep and powerful. These colours help to give a film-like rendering and this lens is really good at that and its images are really reminiscent of film. Generally it has a film-like rendering and it lends that to the images that it makes. Now I think that's partly due to this lens not being particularly sharp. Film images were never particularly sharp unless you were using a really slow film and a very very fine sharp lens. They were never that sharp and this lens helps to reproduce that feel. This unassuming little lens has two main strengths and that's its extraordinary colour and its equally extraordinary background blur. It's a remarkable little sleeper of a lens. It usually comes in M42 mount and it's available for around 30 to 40 pounds or even less if you're lucky. That's got to be a bargain, a really nice little lens and well worth checking out. Now our next lens is possibly the most surprising lens I've ever shot. It's a very cheap 80mm to 200mm zoom. It's branded as Sirius and the aperture values are f4. Point, where are we? f4.5 to f5.6. It's a cheap third party lens that was cheap when it was new and it's very cheap now as well. This lens was sent to me by viewer Werner Britz uh, in a, a package of goodies that I received recently. Werner, this is a fantastic lens and I thank you very much for it as well as all the other stuff. I honestly wasn't expecting much when I came to shoot this lens. It doesn't look much, it's a third party lens, it's rather old, but my goodness was I in for a big surprise. Let's just have a closer look at the lens just so you can see it close up. So there we are, there's our Sirius 80 to 200 mil. It's all metal and it's very nicely made in the manner of 70s lenses. It's a push-pull lens, nice simple mechanism and it's all still working nicely. Everything works nice and smoothly. It's nicely finished but again there's nothing particularly interesting about it. It's a lens you really wouldn't look twice at or at least I wouldn't anyway. There's a depth of Focus please. Thank you. There's depth of field scale here and the aperture ring is right at the back here and that does make for nice easy access though. Listening to the sound of that aperture mechanism you can see that this actually is a very cheap lens because uh, you know that's not the most finely made mechanism I've ever seen but as they say the proof of the pudding is in the eating this is a really nice lens firstly it's very sharp even wide open now that's partly to do with its relative slowness this is not by any means a fast lens with a maximum aperture of f 4.5 but even so it's still a very sharp lens because it's a longish lens, well, very long if you push it right to the long end of 200 millimeters, it gives plenty of blur and separation even at longer distances, and that makes it a great street photography lens. It makes beautiful portraits, and I find it's far easier to do 
and it's far easier to get nicer, natural looking portraits with a longer lens. It's got great colour that's full and rich and resonant and it's got beautiful background blur that again amazingly for a lens so cheap never seems to become harsh or unpleasant and I can only say again that this is a very surprising lens. It's also a very cheap lens at around 10 to 20 pounds if that you can often find lenses like this and this very lens itself in fact for less than 10 pounds this really is a lens that's practically free and it does cover a very wide range of focal lengths if you're taking your first steps in mirrorless photography and your first steps in vintage lenses this is a great one to get because it covers from 80 mil which is a really nice focal length right the way out to 200 mil so this is a good one to consider as a first lens it's a great way into vintage lenses and it's a great lens to add to a collection as well a really surprising really uh, good lens that uh, i think has given me the biggest surprise of the week the next lens I'm going to show you is this one. This is the Helios 44-3. And if you're a regular viewer to this channel, you'll know that I'm a big fan of the Helios 44. I love its background blur with its characteristic swirl. I love its cheap price. I like the fact that it's really, really easy to service. I actually like its shape and the way it's made. I think it's a really good looking lens. Uh, and I like the fact that it's a Biotar clone as well. And I've made a lot of shots with these lenses. They were made for many, many years from, I think, the early 60s to the 90s sometime. If you know exactly when, please do correct me. But I think that's roughly right. And there were lots of versions as well. There was the original Helios 44, which, as if by magic, has just appeared in front of me. And then there was the 44-2, which shared the same body shape. I do like the shape of these early Helios 44 lenses. And then after these came the 44 M, the 44-2, the 44-3, that's the one we're looking at today. And I think they went all the way up to the Helios 44 version 7. And each version was said to be sharper and better than the previous one. So let's have a look at our Helios. And also let's compare it to the original Helios. And you'll be able to see the difference in shape and so on. So there are Helioses. This is the 44-3 and this is the original 44 and you can see there the difference in body shape and style and you can see that the 44-3 has an updated sort of body which probably looked rather more modern at the time um, but now I prefer this shape but anyway shape's not a great deal to do with it. There is the front of the lens. We've got that wonderful Cyrillic script proclaiming its make and model. We've got focus rings. Ah, yes, this is a preset aperture. So we've got two aperture rings. So it's just the same as the earlier Helios lenses in that the aperture is preset. The focus ring is at the back. And this one doesn't seem to want to turn. There it is. Now it's turning. So it's broadly similar to the Helios lenses that went before it. So I really was, having used uh, Helios 44s for many years, I really was looking forward to using this one and finding out what it could do, given that uh, you know each succeeding version was said to be sharper and better. I've uh, up to this point I'd only ever used the 44 and the 44 too. So my hope was that a good lens, a lens that I really like, would be would have been made even better. I have to admit in the end I was a little bit disappointed. I shot it wide open and 
to be honest, it didn't really seem very different to the other Helios 44s that I've shot. In fact, this version might even be a little bit less sharp than the earlier lenses. It proved very, very sensitive to light and to washing out and to losing contrast in certain lighting conditions. And that I found quite unusual because it wasn't bright sunlight on the day I was using it. It was very diffuse light, so there were no sort of severe, sharp light rays coming directly from the sun into it. So that was a surprise. So it's wide open images. I did find a little bit disappointing. It worked much better stock down, of course, as any lens will. Stock down, it gives far better colour, much stronger contrast, and it's much sharper as well. But overall, honestly, this one wasn't quite as nice as the earlier lenses. Now, the makers might have something to do with it. The original Helios 44s were made by KMZ in Moscow, but they were also made by two other companies. Um, I forget the names of both of them. I think one of them was Valdi. I think this is a Valdi version. And the Valdi lenses do seem to have coatings that are not as good as the KMZ versions. So I think, honestly, with these, with the Helios 44 lenses, certainly up to the 44.3, look for a KMZ version, either the early 13 blade version, which you can often get very cheap, or the slightly later black bodied 8 blade version, uh, again made by KMZ. There are many, many around and they're still cheap. You can buy one of these lenses for about 30 to 60 pounds or thereabouts. And a good one will make you some very, very beautiful images. It's a lovely lens and it's one of my favourites, but I do think the KMZ versions are rather better. So next up, this lens, the Maya Optic Gorlitz Oriston 1.8 50mm. Now, this lens, I believe, as far as I understand it, do correct me if I'm wrong in the comments box, but I think this was the lens that later morphed into the Pentacon 50mm 1.8 that was used on Practica cameras for many, many years. But honestly, having shot it, it seems rather different. The signature of the lens seems a little different. So I don't think the Pentacon 1.8 is a direct clone of this lens. Now this is a rather interesting lens. Let me take it off the adapter here. This is a this is an exacta version but most of them are in M42. It's a very very nicely made lens and it feels really solid and this is an all metal lens. Let's take a closer look. So there's our little Meyer Optic Oreston and it really is a nicely made thing and it really feels like a quality lens. It's glass and metal and the focus ring turns with a beautiful fluid smoothness as good as I've seen on any lens. I do love this zebra pattern on the aperture ring at the back here. Minimum focus distance is, I think it's going to be pretty close. Yes, it is. Minimum focus distance is 33 centimetres. Can we see that? 33 centimetres. That's a really close focusing lens. And I always think that's a great feature to have on a lens. It's a very good looking lens as well. It really looks like it has the classic photographic look and this lens will sit well on any camera whether it's digital mirrorless or an m42 film camera this lens will look great on all of them now i was very impressed by this lens i was impressed by its construction and the quality of its manufacture and i was very impressed 
with the results it makes. It makes very, very nice, lovely, soft blur, which is softer than the Pentacon 1.8. There are points where the Pentacon 1.8 produces harsh, unpleasant blur. It doesn't happen all the time and it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen and it happens enough to notice. This lens doesn't do that. So there again, I don't think the Pentacom 1.8 is a direct clone of this lens. The blur can be very wacky and it can be very lively, but it just never turns harsh. It's always well behaved and from my point of view is a good thing it's got a hint of swirl as well i do like a little bit of swirl in the background of an image i think it gives life and character and a real dynamism to a shot this blur from this lens has real character and it can make far more interesting images than a modern lens can this lens perfectly illustrates the worth of vintage lenses. It's not technically perfect, but it does make really interesting images. Colour's very strong from this lens too. There's plenty of saturation, which is how I personally uh, like my images. They've got depth, they've got resonance, and I think colour's a real area of strength for this lens. Wide open, it's not particularly sharp, but I think it's sharp enough. I, I don't think it's too soft. And of course, if you stop it down even a little, it sharpens up a great deal, just like any lens will. I found it perfectly usable wide open, though, I must say. And in any case, this is not a lens that you would buy for its sharpness. This one you'd buy for character, and it's got that in abundance. £40 will get you a good uh, version of this lens and for that price you just can't go wrong. Finally today we've got another cheap long lens that's a great performer. It's this one. It's the Helios 135mm f2.8. So this is a pretty fast long lens. This was lent to me by viewer Derek Holmes, who also lent to me this Helios 44.3, which I forgot to mention earlier. So many, many thanks for the loan, Derek. It's much appreciated. I'm not sure where these were made, whether they were actually made by Russian optical companies. I know that some later Helios lenses were made in Japan, so this possibly might be made by a third party Japanese company like Cosina or somebody of that kind. Or it might not. But whatever and wherever it's made, this is a very, very nice lens indeed. I'll give you a closer look. So there's our fast Helios 135. It's an all metal lens. It's very, very nicely made. It's at least as nicely made as any other lens of the time, and really as any uh, as any other lens I've seen. It's got this very handy uh, pull-out lens hood, which was a feature of quite a few lenses of the time. It's very nicely made, metal and glass, everything turns smoothly, the focus ring turns like butter, the aperture ring turns with definite clicks but it's not so clicky and clanky as the serious lens was. Please let's have some focus, thank you. So it's not quite so clicky and clanky as the serious lens, it's a much nicer feeling sort of aperture mechanism. This lens too has an M42 mount and the markings are very very finely engraved. I thought when I looked at them at first I thought they were painted or printed but no they're actually really finely engraved. I can feel that with my finger now. So it's a very nicely made lens. It makes great images too. I love the colours from this lens. They're very strong but they're also very delicate and they remind me a little bit, quite a lot in fact, of the 
colours from the Pentax lenses, the Takamar lenses, which were similarly strong and resonant, but rather pastely uh, in their approach, not quite so much in your face as colours from other lenses might be. It's very sharp, wide open, which really surprised me, actually. Wide open at 2.8, this lens is proper sharp and makes some very sharp images and it's got really good contrast as well as some very strong contrast going on and some beautiful blur that never turns harsh it's always soft it's always nice and there's always loads of it as well because it's a long lens it's going to give you separation pretty much at any distance that you're shooting so a really really nice lens quite a surprise for me i hadn't expected it to be this nice but it really is a nice one and it's cheap as well you can buy this lens today for somewhere between 20 and 30 pounds maybe a little more maybe a little less but you know whatever you pay you're not going to go wrong you're not going to go too far wrong um, buying this lens a very nice lens indeed and rather an unsung gem. So there we are, five fantastic lenses that you can buy today. I mean, even if you bought all of these lenses, you'd probably have changed a spare from 150 quid or so. These really are cheap bargains and, you know, price to performance. I think these are some of the best lenses uh, that you can buy at the moment. So that's it from me for today. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the jolly old bell before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to support it uh, to help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. And you can do that from as little as one dollar per month as ever. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more xenography.